Happy Saturday. My name is Callie and this is another weekend of clarinets, cats, and coffee. Now, many of you who have been watching all summer have noticed that I've had a couple of my auxiliary instruments sitting out in the background of my recent videos. Um, and one of them is this guy, the bass clarinet. A lot of you have asked uh, for me to make a video on getting started on bass clarinet. And so that is what I'm going to do today. Now, to be completely honest, I did not like playing bass clarinet for a long time. I, I could not sound good on this instrument. And over the years, one of my personal struggles has been to uh, become a little bit less tense in my playing and just kind of relax. And a couple of years ago, or a few years ago at this point, uh, when I was in the Civic Orchestra, I was assigned to play bass clarinet again, much to my dismay. And, but I was like, okay, I'm determined. I'm determined to figure this out and sound better and, and not suck at this instrument. And much to my surprise, I found that I actually wasn't as terrible at the instrument as I had remembered from uh, my days in college. And I thought, hmm, maybe all this work I've been doing on, uh, on, on playing with less tension uh, actually has uh, made me better at bass clarinet. And so I've, I've come to like put together some of my own um, ideas and tips and tricks from over the years on how to manage this instrument if you feel like you are bad at it. Um, so we're gonna get into that right now. Okay, so the first thing you guys know um, from what I just told you is you have to be relaxed a little bit more relaxed when you play bass clarinet, okay? So um, what I personally do is I actually play on slightly softer reeds on bass clarinet than I would on B flat clarinet. So I'm, I've been playing on V12 fours um, for quite a while now on B flat clarinet. And so for bass clarinet, I'm actually playing on three and a halves. Um, and so I'm, I'm still trying to decide if I like three and a half V12s or traditionals best on bass, but the one I'm playing on today is a traditional three and a half made by Van Doren. So that's the first thing. You, you don't want to be fighting against your reed, clamping or biting or clenching or tensing anything up whenever you're going to play this instrument. Now, the next thing that you wanna keep in mind is that this mouthpiece is a lot bigger than B-flat clarinet. Look at this difference in size. It's like, there we go, just like massive, right? And, and the reeds, the size of the reeds, right? How much you have to deal with, how much more vibration you have to deal with when switching to bass clarinet, okay? So bigger reed means more vibration and also more mouthpiece, okay? So one of my favorite tricks for knowing how much mouthpiece to actually take in is to look at how long the facing is on the mouthpiece. So the facing of a mouthpiece is the part of the mouthpiece that curves away from the reed and I recommend trying to put as much reed in your mouth as mouthpiece curves away. So what I say is, okay, find the point on the reed where the mouthpiece and the reed meet. So for my mouthpiece, it's about halfway down. And then find that point and put that much mouthpiece in, right? So. <laughs> That's like so much reed vibrating right there, like a lot of reed vibrating. And that's what you want. You want to have as much sound and vibration as possible, okay? So if you guys are only taking in as much mouthpiece as you're used to with your B flat clarinet, you're going to get a tiny wimpy sound and a bunch of like shrill kind of chirpy squeaks. <laughs> And your 
your low range just won't be as, as vibrant and uh, you're gonna start building up tension. So put more mouthpiece in, make sure, you, you'll know if you have too much, right? Because you're gonna get a big old squeak. So um, try to find that happy medium, right? Where you have as much read as possible vibrating and, and as much as possible. So um, you could put one of those mouthpiece patches on where you slide your teeth down to the point where the mouthpiece patch has the groove and that can kind of help you get in the habit of how much mouthpiece to take in. All right, so we've got, we've got read set up, we've got how much mouthpiece to take in, all of these things to eliminate tension, and the, the, the next thing that I personally struggled with for a very long time was taking in enough air, and I, to be honest, I'm, I'm still trying to push myself to use more air and to just create more and more wind when I play this, this instrument, because the more wind you have, the better the sound and the more projection you're gonna get, right? So I know you guys have heard me before on B-flat clarinet, make sure you start whew, relaxed, right? Relax everything before you even take your first breath in. And then when you go to breathe in, take in more air than you think you need. Really feel everything fill up from the bottom up. The thing that goes hand in hand with taking in enough air is actually blowing enough air out. Now, if you imagine your wind on B flat clarinet as being like pencil shaped air coming out of your lip and everything kind of centered and focused. Imagine that the bass clarinet is more like a um, uh, more like a permanent marker or, or a sharpie or a garden hose, just a bit more wider stream of air and a little bit slower stream of air. And I still make sure that I feel the air pressure in the front of my face, right? But it's not quite as as present as you would if you were playing. B flat clarinet. So you have to keep the wind going, but it's not as fast as B flat, right? Unless you go into the extreme high registers, then you have to do uh, different types of voicing and things. Um, but so imagine aiming all of your air like you're like you're just a balloon exploding, keeping everything moving forward. And, and so on, right? You just gotta really keep that wind going. Now, um, as you exhale, try not to clench your throat or your chest or hold anything back. When you're out of air, you're out of air. And you have to just kind of figure out how far your personal lung chamber of air will take you in phrases. So don't be afraid to really push your limits to see how much air you can use and how far you can go. Now I like using a neck with the angle going more upward because that's more similar to the angle that I play on with B flat clarinet. Um, but those of you who I think maybe double on like saxophone or other instrument probably prefer the neck that goes straight out. So I'm coming to you from a clarinet player's perspective playing on bass clarinet. So when you when you go to play your uh, bass clarinet with this higher angle, um, you, you want to make sure that your jaw is relaxed in a forward position and that you're blowing directly at the reed instead of down the tip of the mouthpiece. This is gonna give you more projection and a bit more richness and color of sound. And you want to try to put pressure from your top teeth onto the top of the mouthpiece as a little bit of leverage, just like you would on regular clarinet, putting a little leverage onto your top teeth like that. So 
with your head kind of pressing in and your teeth kind of pressing in, that'll also loosen up this part of your embouchure and your face so you can let the reed really vibrate. Instead of clamping up, you kind of feel everything going down, right? <sighs> And then just like B-flat clarinet, you want to try to keep your chin flat so you're not clamping up into the reed, keep your corners, corners in, but just a tiny bit looser than you would on B-flat clarinet. So again, the reed can have more room to vibrate and you have a little bit more room to work with as you go from low to high. Now, the last thing I'm gonna suggest is that you practice doing 12th exercises, register exercises, whatever you want to call it. Um, I know, you know, maybe once or twice a year, I will share my legato warm up with you guys. So I'm going to play some of that for you right now, but you will notice that you do have to change your air when you're going from like lower range to clarion register. Uh, you do have to change your air a little bit um, from the low range to be more open to the high range to be more similar to like b-flat clarinet a little bit faster air and it just takes some time and some practice to memorize how the different registers feel and again that was always a struggle for me because on b-flat clarinet we're taught to try to keep everything the same and the difference is here low register is more open clarion is uh, more like pencil shaped and then the altissimo is more like E and higher shape, so O, I, A, E, um, throughout all the registers. Um, but that's, that's a lot for me to think about. I just think about the sound and how it feels, and I try to just memorize how each of the registers should feel based on how it sounds, right? Um, so I'll play a few of these for you. Alright guys, so I'm going to put a link below um, for you if you don't already know this warm up that I've posted like a million times on B flat clarinet, I'm going to post a link below to the video and also to the PDF where you can just download it. I love doing this on bass clarinet and I hope you guys will find this useful as well. And there you have it guys, that's about it here for tips on getting started on bass clarinet. Um, don't be afraid to experiment with using lots and lots of air. There's nothing people love more than a big, rich, fat bass clarinet sound. So just get out there and go for it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a good rest of your week, and as always, happy practicing.